Hey everybody, welcome to Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. My name is Reed with Best Made Videos. We are a wedding videography company based out of West Seattle, Washington. And today, uh, I do think we are in for a special treat. It's uh, late on a Monday and we've assembled quite the motley crew here of, of uh, wedding professional extraordinaires. Uh, we all went down to Vegas uh, two weeks ago for the wedding MBA. We have Rebecca Phillips of Rebecca Jane Photography. We have Kelly Blair of uh, Historic 1625 and Callie Holcomb of Callie Holcomb Events. And uh, I want to thank you guys for coming in today. We thought it would be great to kind of get everybody together, kind of do a rehash, kind of detox from you know Vegas and the NBA and kind of what we learned. So why don't you, we, we start with Rebecca and kind of go around. Just, uh, just introduce yourself. Tell us who you are and, and what you do just to start out. I'm Rebecca. I own Rebecca Jane Photography. Uh, we are a photography company based out of Tacoma, Washington. We also own Rain City Photo Booth events um, as well, and we do photography primarily for weddings. And how long have you guys been doing photography? We've been in business for 13 years. Perfect. And Kelly, uh, we Kelly is a, a is a veteran of the podcast, uh, unlike the other two. Why don't you uh, reintroduce yourself if, if anybody doesn't know who you are? My name is Kelly Blair. I'm the manager of Historic 1625 in Tacoma, Washington, and we are an event venue. Perfect. And Kelly? Kelly Holcomb of Holcomb Weddings and Events. <laughs> I am a uh, wedding event planner based out of Tacoma. We do uh, primarily weddings, but we also do corporate and nonprofit work. Perfect. And so uh, this is great. You know, it's a good way to kind of catch up. And I do think, you know, doing the the MBA, um, you know, it's kind of a once a year thing. If anybody doesn't know, and, and anyone can correct me, but it's kind of like, you know, if you're doing like your MBA of, you know, learning the business of whatever. And this, so this is kind of like learning the business side of weddings, right? Yeah. So um, why don't we start off? Um, so I went two years ago and then I went again this year. Uh, why doesn't anyone, um, Kelly, you've gone before mm -hmm. uh, with your, with your venue owners. So talk about, I want to hear everyone's experience with going down to uh, Vegas for the show. So this is my second time visiting um, for Wedding MBA, and two years ago was kind of a unique experience. Um, we were there, and it was the same time as the shooting down there, so it was kind of a interesting time to be in Vegas. Um, two years ago, I think we learned a lot of things to take away and apply to the business. Um, this year, I think the experience was significantly better. Um, every seminar that I attended, I felt like I learned valuable information, stuff that was pertinent to like improving the business and just overall was um, a better educational experience, I think. But I think it's always good to step away from your business, get out of your routine and just kind of take time to audit and reflect and just think what are things we're doing great and where are things we can improve on. So that's why I love going to Wedding MBA. We've gone twice now in the last three years. So we came back this time really energized and excited and mm -hmm eager to apply um, things that we learned. Uh, and Kelly, had, had you been down there before? Yeah, we were down there the same year Kelly was. And that was crazy. So let's just put it this way. It was a like way different, better, like a little more less somber event, um, which is obvious, but I mean, it was definitely a better time this time. And every year they seem to have like their own unique take on the industry and as it moves. And I felt like this year, like the first year was being like authentic and creating an experience for your clients and all of these things. And like this year it felt a little bit more like, okay, take that authenticity, make it your own and like really like zhuzh up what you got. And that like, that's kind of what I found. Yeah. Yep. And then, you know, Rebecca, you and Alex were kind of the ones that got me. I was kind of on the fence of going again this year. I had gone the same year that, that you guys had gone. I don't think we really even, even know, know each there. other. Know. No. Um, but yeah, I also I gone that. I went, but I didn't know you were I didn't know you went there. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. And so, but you guys, you know, I had done done um, Alex and Jake's wedding this year with Alex, and he had said that you guys had just kind of got the ticket. So had you guys gone before? What was the thought process of wanting to go down and, and kind of invest in your business? This was actually our first year doing Wedding MBA. We had been to Vegas previously the last two years for another convention that's uh, WPPI, which is more photography-based. Um and we always take away a lot of really great information from that. And we felt wedding MBA would be a great experience for us. Um, so this was our first time and uh, we loved it. We plan on going again next year. Um, it was great to sort of, um, I felt like 
vendor bonding was kind of a yeah. a theme this year. Mm-hmm. We got together with a lot of gr- other great vendors from the Seattle area. Um, spent a lot of time getting to know each other. Um, going to classes, conferences. Um, we went to the party at the end of the event, which was great and a lot of fun. Which was amazing. It was amazing. It was the good job wedding wire and the knot. Oh, good job wedding wire and the knot. It was amazing. <laughs> it was great. <laughs> Yeah, no, and the bonding was good. And I guess for anyone that doesn't know, you know, the Wedding MBA, it's kind of a two and a half day conference. I do think they book it really smart where you can work the weekend if you need to and then mm-hmm. fly in on Monday. I always mm-hmm. fly in Monday. Mm-hmm. And then you can fly, you know, it's so it's half day Monday, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday. Mm-hmm. And then you can, like, I fly out Wednesday, but I know you guys stayed and, and went to Journey. And, yeah. and, you know, then it's nice to kind of like take some time for yourselves too. But, um, you know, and it is, so it's, you know, kind of like all day seminars, they have a trade show, like breakout groups, and then obviously like the vendor parties at night. So, I mean, there's definitely a lot of stuff that they offer mm-hmm. kind of depending on if you want to go learn about new like software that's for sale or new, like I know they even have like photo booths and stuff. I didn't walk through any of the trade stuff at all this year. Like I didn't the, w- either much. Yeah. I, I know really that you, I know you and Alex kind of wanted to walk through and, and you had talked about finding some new software for your business. We did. We found a new studio management software that we're getting ready to implement um, during our off season. And we're really excited about it. Um, I just feel like it's a great, it's a great way to sort of, I don't know, um, sort of update and refresh and, um, you know, come back with new ideas for, for next year. Mm-hmm. Yeah. They, I mean, I think they really do it a good time of year. Um, I think next year it's even later still. I saw it's November the, next is it year, November? Yeah. yeah it it's super late. November. That's late. Sorry. Oh, I think they yeah. did it because the weekend it normally falls in is going to be 10, 10, 2020. So I think they pushed oh. it with how the 10 and the 2020. That so that's my, I think that makes sense. Back. Well, I just think it's, it's a good time of year. I mean, I don't, obviously we're all Seattle based, but we're, you know, we are super seasonal and like, yeah. you know, we have a pretty hard, like, yeah. Well, I, Kelly's shaking. <laughs> Kelly's, not a, no. Kelly's not a seasonal venue, but you know, for most of us that have a seasonal wedding, uh-huh. you know, business, um, you know, October is kind of like it just slows down, whether it it, it ends or but it slows down. So it's a good time to go down and really kind of like figure out, um, you know, maybe what you're doing right, where you're doing wrong. Um, I guess first off, you know, just like takeaways from that, like what did you guys feel like was maybe something that you learned the the best from this year that you're really excited to kind of implement? And Kelly, we can start with you. Uh, let's see here. So on, um, I run a whole soft. I don't run it, but I partake in a software system called uh, IO Planner. And they had their own like sub conference this year. And so I did that on Monday. And so uh, what I feel like I learned that came back to me this year was we do our job. Like it's like the back of our hand, right? Like we know how to do our job, but our clients don't. This is the first time they've been married or we hope and, or they just don't do it every day. So this year it was like, you know, let your clients really know what you're doing and like just keep thing, keeping them in the loop and showing them a different way and different systems and things that they can, you know, whether they want it or not, it's just keeping them in the loop and keeping them prepped was kind of what we came, I came away from this year. It was like, it's nice, just a little reminder, be like, yeah, you're right. We're like, we know what we're doing. We should all just, just also keep letting them know what they're doing. Kelly, what about you? This year, I think that in a lot of the seminars, it was an opportunity. Like us as Historic 1625, we always pride ourselves on our customer service and how we serve our clients. And that's something we take huge pride in and something that's always like a huge part of our mission. And so a lot of the time was just kind of realizing like, yes, we're doing a lot of the right things. Like we're doing a great job of what we're at, like kind of serving our clients, but also there was moments where like, how do we better serve our clients? How do we improve as a business? And I think just getting those wheels turning of thinking how we can better do what we're already doing. is a huge takeaway. Um, I mean, we've only been home from Vegas for like a week and a half, two Mm -hmm. weeks. Right. And there's already changes that we've made and implemented. So it's just kind of nice to see that just taking the trip to Vegas, just kind of reaffirmed that we're already doing a good job, but also gives us an opportunity to stop and pause and think, and evaluate how to better improve. Rebecca, any big takeaways? I feel like the biggest takeaway, honestly, we, we took some classes, um, and we learned some things, um, primarily things that we were already doing or already planning on implementing. But, um, I feel like our biggest takeaway was really just kind of the fire it lit under us Mm -hmm. to, 
to keep growing and keep improving and, and keep, um, you know, taking steps forward to just make the experience for our clients overall a better experience. Um, and then with that new software that I'm getting ready to implement, I feel like that's going to kind of revolutionize the, the experience that I'm giving my clients already. So I'm really, really fired up and excited to make those changes. Um, and then vendor, just team vendor bonding, getting to know um, Kelly and I really had a great time this this trip, getting to know each other. And Kelly and I, um, even Reed and I, I mean, we just spent a lot of time, you know, having dinner together and talking about, um, you know, takeaways from this last wedding season and um, things we've learned and things we plan on on doing next year. So it's been a great experience overall. Yeah, it's a year. It was. No, I it's think still it, going. It's still going. It's still going. Yeah. <laughs> No, and I think, you know, something too with like the NBA, um, you know, I film like a lot of conferences up here in Seattle and, you know, a lot of like real other conventions, a lot of like other things. And I do feel like a lot of it is about like almost like tricking the customer. Like I'm a real editor. Like how can I set up um, like funnels to get people to like get their info so then I can like send them stuff or like how can I like trick people into like picking me. Mm-hmm. And I feel like where a lot of the stuff at, like that I went to about like, you know, millennials and like where millennials are shopping, it's more like, how do you appeal to that versus like, how can I like trick them into like hiring me? Yeah. Does that make sense? It's like how like, to present your business in like the authentic way, like how you showcase yourself in your best way, I think is what a lot of it tries to make you think and evaluate business and not so much the sales pitches or the whatnot. It's really like, all right, who are you as a business? What do you do? Great. Um, it really makes you kind of do a lot of inner thinking as like an employee or a business owner. Um, and we'll get your business and really try and put your best foot forward. And I think wedding MBA does a good job of that. Um, I mean, there's a ton of attendees and we're all in the same industry and I don't know. I just, it was a good yeah year, I think. And I don't feel like it was very gimmicky, a lot of them. No. Two years good. ago, I feel like mm-hmm. there were some that were very more gimmicky and more sales-like and not so much authentic. And this year, I felt like the seminars were definitely just a lot more, I, I keep on, I feel like authentic is like I the mean, theme of Wedding MBA. But this I feel year, like but, that's our industry too, because we're serving like a client and it's not, we're not just trying to get anybody and everybody into our, sorry, I'm like, Sorry. Um, we're just not trying to get everybody and anybody into like our business. We're yeah. really trying to like hone in who our clients are too. Yeah. And who is your ideal client? Who is our I mean, ideal client? There's enough yeah. clients to go around and enough business. So it's there's kind so of many. really matchmaking yeah. between vendors mm-hmm. and clients. Yeah. Which is also why I think like when you get a group of vendors that you like to work with, those people are probably going to pick all of your vendors too, because they like you. So they're probably going to like everybody else. So I think also like that team bonding thing, I think really helps all of us in the grand scheme of things, but it also helps our clients because we can help them best. Yeah. It's always interesting. Yeah. Just how, how, you know, many people that are at the conference with them also like how many people don't go, I don't know. I just always feel like, you know, anything where it's just, it's so competitive nowadays and there's so many photographers and video and venues yeah. and planners and just like, you know, there's just so like, but then you go and you're like, I'll be in like a video class and there's like, <laughs> you can do that. You can't do that. So, so we're back now after Callie decided to get gum on the podcast and we had to throw Not her off. physical gum on the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but it does, it does surprise me just how competitive the wedding market is and how many different, you know, vendor types there are. And like, I'll be like in a video class and there'll be like, you know, 20, 25 people. And that's like the whole country, whoever mm-hmm. people that decided to come to this. And I'm like, why the hell is there not anybody else? Like, you know, the I know video that's here, yeah. right? And it's just weird to me that, you know, this is obviously stuff that people are doing full-time or semi-full-time mm-hmm. wanting to be full-time and that you or wouldn't. Looking to grow, yeah. Yeah, and that it's, I mean, it is, I think, for the conference, a pretty low cost of, um, you know, entry. I mean, 200 and whatever dollars for a ticket for the week. You know, I mean, obviously flights and everything, but I don't know. I mean, you guys, you know, we booked in June. What was it that finally kind of got you over the edge to come down and do it? I mean, you had obviously heard about it before. I think the reason we decided to do it this year is because timing just worked out with our schedules. Um, 
in the past, you know, there were maybe other scheduling conflicts, um, things going on. And we're just kind of at a point in our business where I feel like we, it's time for us to make some changes and, and grow. And, and, you know, we've been doing this for 13 years. Um, that's a long time. And some of our systems in place have been the same for those 13 years. Um, for example, our studio management software, we've been using the same studio management software for 10 years and there just weren't enough updates. There wasn't enough, it wasn't modern and it didn't feel modern and it, did, it felt clunky and it felt like I needed something new and something modern. And so that was the biggest takeaway for me was, was updating that um, software, which uh, it's gonna be a huge, huge process. Uh, it's probably gonna take a few months to get everything set up and running, but um, I think it's gonna change the overall client experience um, and it's going to be huge for our business. So, um, this year we just, we were ready for change and growth and it was time and it worked out. And Kelly, obviously you guys, you know, where you and your, the owner come, mm -hmm. you know, so you're investing <clears throat> double, I mean, Rebecca yeah. and Alex too, but you, you guys are also investing that to come. I mean, why do you guys feel it was so important to come back, you know, again? Two years ago, we took home a lot of valuable information and really just got the wheels turning and, really learned the value of just stepping out of our routine. As a business that operates year-round doing events every weekend, you kind of get sucked into that routine and it's like, okay, another weekend, whatever. And all of a sudden here we are, it's almost November and it's like, where did the year go? And so just building in that time to step away from the office, take a few days to just do an audit, do kind of evaluate, educate ourselves. Um, it is really valuable. And like what I love about Wedding MBA is they kind of build a track that's like, your specialty specific. So um, our owner, Kristen, was there alongside me. So we looked at the schedule of seminars and kind of divided and conquered. So we usually always tackled like a venue specific one. But then there's times like we would sit in like SEO training or we would do like the wedding planner, just something to kind of educate us, well-round us, um, kind of step out of the venue box and look at things from a different perspective. So Having both of us there is kind of nice to just divide and conquer and really over-educate ourselves. Um, we are at the airport and kind of started to a, do a debrief, and there's so much that we took away that we were the last people to board our flight and almost missed our flight home after being at the airport early just because we were so caught up in conversation, just excited to talk through things. Um, it's something that we don't do every year. Probably every other year is what we're looking at doing it, but um, there is a huge value just to the education on the seminars and the topics they touch on, the speakers they bring in, um, and just kind of being able to step away and pat yourself on the back and say, hey, we're doing a great job, but how can we do better? Um, there's definitely a huge value. Yeah, because there's definitely stuff there, like I'll be in some of the classes and they'll say mm -hmm. things and you'll be like, oh, I am doing that. Like mm -hmm. it is like reaffirming, but then yeah. I do think you get um, just tangible, a lot of, not all the seminars, but a lot of them will give you tangible, like the SEO stuff. And yes. it'll be like, you know, here's eight things that you need to do, you know, or you could be doing, be a better in this, you know, the post for it's not so much like broad level. I mean, I think broad level stuff's good too, but I think at least it's nice to have like a bullet point list mm -hmm. of like, well, I need to like respond to client reviews or, um, you know, I need to do a better job posting the hours on whatever in case yeah. they're different, you know, setting just boundaries, setting expectations. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, I think it's, it's good to have that kind of list of things that you can walk away. Like you said, you guys almost missed the flight, you know? Yeah. We were sitting in this coffee shop and just were getting into conversation going through. I mean, we have notebooks filled with notes. I still have my notes from two years ago. Um, there's just so much that you take away from, and then it's hard. You get right back to the office and you get sucked back into your routine. So it's how do we go from this amazing experience to actually implementing it and making it happen? So it's kind of finding that balance of getting back into that routine and taking care of your clients. Like it's important missing four days out of the office is not easy. Um, so kind of going back, playing catch up and then taking all this great advice and say, how do we implement it? How do we implement it? How do we make time for it? What does this look like going forward? So we got our wheels going and we're excited. Yeah, it's tough. And like, you know, because Rebecca, I mean, you guys are still, I'm I'm kind of catching up on edits. I've been trying to like fiddle with stuff, 
you know, in between, okay, this is sending, okay, what can I do? And like, you guys are still in Cali. I know you guys both, you know, actively have tons of stuff. So how do you balance that, you know, excitement of wanting to, to do stuff, but then also, you know, obviously take care of the clients you have. It's hard. Yeah. <laughs> it's, there are not enough hours in the day. Um, I'm still playing catch up on emails from being out of the office for, we were gone for five days. Um, but we had weddings the weekend before, and then basically we took off the next morning and then we came back and had less than a full day to, um, get ready for weekend weddings all weekend. And so we were gone. I mean, a total of, I want to say like 11 days and playing catch up on emails for those 11 days. It's, it's a challenge. Um, I had to let go of a little bit of sleep. I stayed up late a few nights, um, you know, trying to get emails done and, and then on top of that, um, you know, watching webinars on the new software that I want to implement because I'm excited about it. I'm fired up and I, I want to, I want to do that as soon as possible, but also having to realize that I still have to get back into my normal routine of, of emails and editing and, um, everything else. And it's, it's a challenge. Um, but I know that going into off season right now, we are going to have a little bit of extra time to do those things. So I'm um, just getting caught up with regular work right now and sort of putting in a game plan for how to how to start, you know, implementing the things we took away from in Vegas. Um, we took a class on editing. It was uh, Reed sat in with us on it and it was it was a cool class. They taught us how to edit, you know, a little more efficiently. Um, and that's one of the things that we as a high volume studio struggle with is trying to keep up with all the editing. It's it's a lot. Um, so that's another thing we're trying to implement too, is, is the editing, um, getting quicker with that. And we're, we're excited and ready for 2020. 2020 is supposed to be a big year. It is a big year. Yep. Kelly, what do you think about coming back and implementing stuff and leaning into the mic? No. <laughs> We went right into a wedding together, Kelly and I. Yeah, we did. So it's just a matter of like, you know, this is the time that you take for your business. I mean, you take it for you personally. I took it for my business. I took it for a vendor bonding moment. I mean, we work with these guys week in and week out, and most of us don't have coworkers. So Mm -hmm. the people that we go down there with are our coworkers and creating that relationship with them through that last throughout the whole year. Cause sometimes we won't see each other for six months oh, yeah. and then all of a sudden we'll see each other weekend after weekend after weekend. Mm-hmm. And then it'll be like another six months gone. We're shoving our face for two minutes having dinner yeah. and that's I, all we really yeah. actually see face to yeah. face from wedding day. Yeah. And then that's it. And so it's like, for me, you know, going to wedding MBA was, you know, a lot of that. It was also, you know, it's investing in your business and you know, whatever that is. And it is an investment. I mean, I don't care if that means you're paying for, you know, a cab ride to get to the venue or to get to the conference. I mean, those, even all of those little things matter and, you know, that's, it matters. And you should put that aside every single year. At least that's for me. I've had coaches and all kinds of people just tell you like reinvest and whatever that means that's, it's going to eventually come back into your business. And even if they're just like little blips, you could do, you know, a day's worth of conference classes, and you might only get a handful of things that really matter to you. That's awesome because you can bring those back and those things could be huge within your business. Um, I'm like everybody else have so many great ideas, but need like another, Time. another Time 24 hands. hours in a day to implement them. <laughs> Time. Um, but I mean, I think that that was also like one thing that we touched on too, is like work life balance and whatever that means. And sometimes <laughs> Right, yeah, we all laugh because we're like that. I don't know what that means. Um, well, we're laughing as we record. We're this laughing podcast at, at, at night on a yeah, Monday. Um, but I, what I took away from it is that I can hire people to help me do those things that don't that give me that balance and whatever. If that means I can and try to figure that out into the next year, and that's what I'm doing. I'm bringing on you know virtual assistants and an admin team to be able to help me grow my business. And for me, that is something that can help grow those things. So you know, that's also an investment into my business. So kind of going from there, but yeah. But I also think that this right here is also really important, and I feel like we're coming back and doing this. This was huge, though. Like yeah. the the vendor bonding mm-hmm. because a huge part of the success of a wedding is a strong team. Yeah. It is a team that trusts each other and 
and really getting to enjoys spend time. Doing it. Yeah, and, 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 each and each enjoys other. each other's yeah. company and really getting to spend time together outside mm-hmm. of the wedding industry and getting yeah. to know each other it was so big mm-hmm. just in itself because I know I know these guys. I know I can trust these guys. Mm-hmm. When I work with these guys, I know that I can depend on them. I know what to expect from them. Um, and it's just, it's huge. Yeah. Like it's really huge to have a strong team. It is. Yep. Yeah. And it, it, your clients feel it too. The clients definitely feel it. And they, they're like, great. You work with them. Perfect. Okay. Let's, you, you trust like, them. You trust them. Tell me done. what to do. Yeah. Yep. It's taking the guesswork out too. Yeah, it is. So yeah, that was good. That was a fun mm-hmm. day. Yeah, I try to convey that all the time with just mm-hmm. the ease of, you know, working together with people and just, you know, getting, like, if you know, Rebecca and I, if we have a wedding together and it's, it just gets a lot of the guesswork away of, you mm-hmm. know, kind of having to feel anything out. You know, we had a lot of uh, photographers this year we had never worked with before. And every time it's like, you know, it's just a feeling out. Yeah, I mean, you it's don't fine. know. Well, yeah. You don't know where this they're going like to stand. stand or where they're gonna, <laughs> yeah. When I work with new videographers, I don't know. I have to talk to them before and during the day and ask mm-hmm. them, well, where are you going to have your tripod? Where are you going to stand? Where are you going to be? Do you need mm-hmm. to get close to them? Are you going to end up in my shot? You know, mm-hmm. and I have videographers all the time who end up in my shot because I don't know what to expect out of them. But yeah. when I work with somebody I know, like Reed is, is the one that I work yeah. with the most. I know where he's going to be. He knows where I'm going to be. And it just, it same thing goes mm-hmm. for when I work with Callie, like, I know she knows what I'm doing and I know mm-hmm. she knows what she's doing and we just, we all work together. We work well yeah. together. Yeah. 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 I, one thing I want to touch on too, and, and Kelly, you kind of talked about, you know, and I agree with kind of the virtual assistants or, or getting, you know, getting rid of some of the work to really let you, you know, let people do, you know, like you as, you know, the creative and putting everything yeah. together in that coordination. Sure. But I do feel like um, a lot of the classes at the MBA are a lot of like the automation and like, how can we automate this? And how can we automate this? And how can we automate? And I think that like, people go and they like want to take these notes and be like, well, I just never want to have to do like this all going to go whatever. And like, I, like, I know people that own companies that like, well, I can book people and I don't even have to touch my phone and it just books it all. But then they'll, you know, we'll talk later and they'll be like, yeah, well, I don't understand. Like, why don't we get like, how do you have so many reviews and what, and it's because you still do with all the automation and everything. And even with like having versus yeah. assistance, like they still need to know, right. That you're, that yeah. they have your, that right. And can, so the, yeah. the goal is to automate the things. And like, you know, Rebecca, like you guys with like a high volume, like to automate the things you can, but still like know that they have you right. That yeah. they know that they know. Cause I do, I see, mm-hmm. I sit in these classes and I see like, and I look around and I see these people like, Oh, I'm just never even going to have to touch my phone or, mm-hmm. you know, yeah. and you're like, well, that's uh, like, yeah. and that is kind of what those people are pitching. And I don't know if that's the right way. Right. Cause like Kelly, like people go to historic because they know you and your team and the people, right. That you bring in. Yeah. And if all that was just like through a computer and they didn't ever talk to you guys. Right. It's hard. Yeah. And I think, The whole automation thing, I think there's the beauty to it. There's so many seminars that are like, yay, automate, automate, automate. And there's so many of the times that it's like, oh, build the relationship with your customers, have that. And so it's like so many things like contradict each other. So it's really hard. It's kind of a balance. It is a balance. And I think it's also you have to understand as a business, how do you want to function? How do you want to see as a business? As a business, we value customer service. So the whole automation thing, there's things that we can automate to a level and we do, but we also need to personalize and build that relationship. Um, once you automate things, you kind of lose that connection that's important. So as a business, we want to get to know our clients. We want to be invested in them, be helpful how we can. And so automating that kind of loses that. Um, but I think there's a way that you can be more efficient. And I think that's kind of what we took away and something that we're focusing on is how do we be more efficient with our clients? How do we better serve them? How do we kind of be more readily available? Um, I mean, I think we already do a pretty good job of that being readily available, but like we've already extended our office hours. We're going to be there more late nights. We're adding someone into our office. Those are things that we've just implemented since Vegas. Um, Just because we know our clients like the late nights, we're drawing more clients from the North end who are working a full day and wanting to commute to Tacoma to visit the venue. So we're adjusting how we operate just to better serve our clients. So um, not ser- not necessarily automating things, but just kind of being more efficient and understanding 
who our client is and what they need and how to better reach them and connect and give a better overall experience from both ends. I think that's great. I think that's a great idea, extending the hours down. Because, I mean, that's like Dorothy knows, you know, like 7 to 9 at night is like the time that people are yeah. emailing because mm-hmm. that's when they have, yeah, you or, know, coming Or down. weekend-wise, yeah. So we're really looking at our schedule and seeing, like, I mean, we have a body in the office almost all the time. Like, But then we're also doing events Friday through Sunday. So it's, okay, I want to come see the venue at 5 o'clock on a Saturday. Well, that's never going to happen, Um I have, the same, I have the same problem yeah. with photography. People want to do their engagement sessions on the weekends and I'm, it's so rare that I, I actually just, have yeah. a Saturday or a Sunday off. I'm always photographing on Saturdays and Sundays. So mm-hmm. having to extend your hours to be available in the evenings when people mm-hmm. are off work and, and then find the work-life balance on top of it. So yeah, let's be at the venue till like eight thirty, nine o'clock, a couple days a week. Right. And then work Friday, sorry, Sunday weddings. Well, so. like they say, you know, running a business is you work 60 hours a week to avoid working 40 hours a week. And it really is true. I 100%. mean, yeah, I, we work, so, and that's why we have to automate so many things is because we are putting in so many hours and it never ends. We don't get a clock out at the end of the day and just go home and be done. We're, we're constantly, I mean, what time is it right now? It's, it's eight 42 at night uh-huh. on a Monday and we're all here yeah. working, um, happily, working. happily. I mean, this is great. I, I enjoy being with all these people. It's, it's wonderful. But a lot of the things they talked about at wedding MBA was apps like mm-hmm. app based, um, you know, things for brides to find venues on an app and brides to find vendors on an app and things are becoming so like behind the scenes and not in person. So, I mean, it's, it's kind of turning that way, I feel like, but being available in person, I think is still so important. Or just to answer emails. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's one thing to, you know, automate efficiency, but you can't automate personalization. No. No. I mean, and I think that that's pretty much at the end of the day, like, who are you? What do you do? Okay, great. Are you in front? Perfect. But in the back end, can you have an automation that answers 90% of the questions that you get asked? Sure. You know, yeah. but, uh, but you the know, product, like the 70%. wedding day, it's just hard. I mean, maybe 70%, <laughs> yeah. maybe 50. I don't know. Yeah. The wedding day is such a like once in a lifetime thing for these people. So it's, you want to be genuine and personal and authentic because it's the one shot at this. So once you automate it, mm-hmm. you're kind of taking away from the specialness of it. So yeah, we as, as clients or as vendors have to remember that yeah. this is, this is normal to us. Weddings mm-hmm. happen every week for us mm-hmm. and, and that's our normal life, but the person whose wedding is this Saturday, mm-hmm. that's their that's only their wedding. wedding. That's their day. That is their only wedding. And mm-hmm. so to them, that's like the biggest thing ever. Right. To us, it's another, it's another day at the office. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but being able to, you know, to relate to them on a personal mm-hmm. level is so important. Yeah, well, it's like you said, it's it's balancing that because like I have you know reminders that send me emails for you know like every other, like I could have my thing send my couple uh, a happy anniversary every year from yes. now for a hundred years. Right. But I have it send me the reminder. Right. And then I send the, you know, like all those emails, like I send those emails, right. Because heaven forbid someone breaks up or something happens or you, you know, someone got in a car accident and you find oh, out and yeah. then they get this automated message like happy, happy anniversary yeah. from, you know, you, like I like having that, that right. But the you, barrier. Yeah. Having yeah. that, like that, you know, it's like the, the, the nuke switch, right. To send off or like, you know, you, I could have it send, you know, the pre, you know, six weeks out questionnaire and all that. But what if you would just talk to the person the yeah. day before what another email the other day with all these. Yeah. Yeah. So I like, and so I, I do think it's that balance, right. Where like, I, that's where I try to balance that where I'm still sending those emails, but then I have all the automations to remind me to do all those things. Mm-hmm. And then I make the decision. Oh yes, I do need to send them that mm-hmm. or no, they just called me yesterday. Like I actually have all that information, you know, cause then if they get the email, then they're like, well, read okay, the, read the dip. Like, what's, mind. Yeah. Know, what's going on? So <laughs> I've had that happen. Yeah. I automated an email mm-hmm. and I had just mm-hmm. talked to them and I went, Oh my gosh. I always tell people though, I'm like, Hey, heads up. Like there might be an email coming. I don't mean to, I was like, yeah. I know we just talked about that. So disregard a couple of those things. Yeah. Cause Sometimes it gets busy in the middle of wedding season and you're like, you do need to have this information. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's especially like questionnaires or like the six month out, like, Hey, here's your checklist. Hope everything's going well. Just wanted to give you a heads up on these are the things that are coming up. This, that, and the other. Yeah. So, but it is, I, yeah. You just apologize if that happens. Oh, sometimes yeah. mom's <laughs> brain kicks in. Mom brain. Mom. Yeah. 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 Can't relate. Yeah. <laughs> well, for, <laughs> All right. Callie and I. <laughs> 
No, but you know, the first day we were in this class and a DJ, I, like I said, I think it was like Epic Entertainment, um, did this whole thing about how they automate. And you know, he's like, we do a thousand events a year. I mean, they have a huge thing, but they have, you know, everything automated from like day one, day two, day four. And then on day seven, we did this. And like, I don't think that like the autom you know, like, I think you would go crazy trying to automate that at least for me. Cause like, what if, like, what if you're in the process of emailing somebody and they ask you a question, you know, and then something kicks back, yeah. like an automate, you know, like it's, I, I always get worried. Like you're going to get caught into like this web of like bounce back and forth mm -hmm. email kind of thing. But I do think like the idea of like, these are the good ways that we try to follow up with sales or these are the techniques we use to like get them to sit down to have a meeting. You know, I think those yes. things are valuable, but not necessarily like, well, we're going to have like 18 different emails that we're going to send every single person that ever emails us. I struggle like not, I don't know if it's not having control, but like when you have those conversations and you're having it more naturally, not automated, you can separate it in your mind. Like, okay, like Sally and Joe, I just talked to them. Da, 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 da. All right. All my ducks are in a row. If you automate it, it's just like you're relying on things to just happen and you have like no idea really what's going on. Like that's my biggest fear. I think about automation is just losing that connection and that feeling of like, I'm on top of things or like, we're good to go. Like you could name a client and I could say, Oh, I still need this, this, and this from that. Like that's the grasp I have of our business. Like I know if they're up to date payment, if we have layout where they're at meeting wise, but like automating it, it's like, I would struggle not knowing that I would be like, I don't even know what to do right now, but I'm sure there's some efficient way to figure it out. Well, or like, or like they have, I, I, I went to the thing and I signed up for like that honey book, like right after mm -hmm. it, it was just like a trial to try to like, look, you know, manage your projects. And I'm thinking like, well, yeah, okay, I guess I could like put the weddings in here and like make checklist. But I'm like, I know what, like you said, I know what people need to send me their music or I know what people need me to do. Yeah. Like for the most part, I mean, not, you know, I don't know if I have every, you know, like every final payment or whatever, but like I could figure it out in five seconds. Like, is it worth it for me to spend six months building? I don't know. And that's why Rebecca was talking to you about the software and all that. Like, it's so hard. It's like, do you, is it, I mean, obviously, I mean, you guys who, you know, twice as much as we do, I mean, you, I think do at the point need some of that assistance to, to balance that. Yeah. But it's, it's tough. It's spending that six months to get it for the next five years, you know? Yeah. What, once you have it set and in place, so we've been using the same um, software management company for 10 years now. And I mean, once it, it took a while, it took a few months to get everything, you know, get all the email templates and the contract and the sort of get the whole system up and running the way that we wanted it to. But once you have it up and running, it really is, it's, it's really valuable. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't automate every single thing, but I have some automated things that I send out to clients that are just things that they might not normally ask. They usually don't normally ask me mm -hmm. just tips and tricks for the wedding day. Um, things as simple as tell your bridesmaids to hold their head up when they're walking down the aisle. And um, if you're going to have your toast at your head table, make sure there's not a big centerpiece right in front of you where I'm not going to get your reaction <laughs> because I can't see your face behind the big thing of flowers on your table, you know, just like little minuscule tips and tricks that I send them. And I automate things like that. And then I automate my invoice reminders as well. And um, so having doing, we do like a hundred events a year between my husband and I, and having some of those things automated is necessary for us to be able to continue to um, do a hundred events a year, which we need to do in order to continue to keep our pricing at the point where we have it now. Um, so it just, it, it makes sense for us and it works. Um, I think automation is very valuable if you have it set right and um, you, you know, have a system in place for, for what you're trying to do. So you, but I think, so this is a great idea. So I didn't know you, cause I've obviously never been one of your clients, but we worked, so you send like little helpful tips and reminders. Yeah, I, I send them, um, I send my clients all like a sample timeline. Um, some, a lot of my clients are budget clients, um, which I love and I prefer to work with. And a lot of them don't necessarily have a planner um, or aren't planning on hiring a planner because it's not in their budget. Um, and so I send out kind of a little sample timeline just to give them a general idea of what the flow of a wedding day looks like. Um, and I send them tips and tricks that we've picked up over the last 13 years of shooting weddings. And I send them, um, you know, information about how to plan out their photography schedule for the day. How much time do I need for this? Um, 
how much time should I have for getting ready? How much time do you need between um, finishing photos and the start of the ceremony? Um, things people don't normally think of. Like people don't normally think that I need an hour between ending the formals and the ceremony time. And in that hour, people are like, well, what are you doing for an hour? Um, well, I'm taking detailed photos of all the setup. I'm taking a photo of your ceremony area, of all of the, the aisle, you know, um, pieces and your arbor and I'm taking photos of your reception setup and your table settings and all the decor that you've spent the last year putting together and planning for. I'm, I'm taking photos of all of that while it's set before your guests are there. And then I'm charging batteries and I'm changing batteries and I'm getting my lights set and I'm getting everything ready to do the ceremony. So, um, you know, I just send out information on that kind of stuff, what to expect on the day of and how how do we, you know, how the wedding day goes. So and see, I think that's smart. So I'm taking notes right now. So I'm going to implement, <laughs> okay. I'm going to implement these ideas yeah. after our wedding MBA, you know, podcast. Yeah. I, I have, help. I have happily read gave me a hard time at wedding MBA because we don't respond to reviews. So I've gotten three reviews in the past week and I have happily responded to all three of them. So I'm batting a thousand and reads eyes, so you're welcome. That's good. It's yeah. it, it's three seconds, right? Or yeah. well, it's, yeah. it's it, but you know, I guess that was so funny because yeah, we were at the. Um, you put me like in like shame. You're like, I felt like. Well, I think it was. A, I think it was one of the SEO classes, <laughs> and I will say so. Jason Hennessy that does the SEO it stuff. Was the blog class, I think, wasn't it? Or maybe it was SEO. No, it was the SEO, and I will tell you, the money that you pay for the MBA. To go to those three SEO classes is worth oh, it. Oh, he's a genius. But yeah. it's worth it. Like, a lot of it's and, over my head, but I took away just like understanding the grasp of how much it is important to focus on and how deep it goes. It's kind of crazy. Yeah. Oh, it's well, and like I said, I mean, he'll never listen to this, but it's he's like one of the smartest <laughs> men I've ever heard listen. Yeah, I mean, I would pay a thousand dollars to like sit and listen well, and to him he talk pay, about He's stuff. able to talk about a concept at like the very beginner level and the very advanced level. So like me, someone who doesn't really focus on our SEO much, like obviously I always take our like internet presence into consideration when doing things, but like I don't really understand the whole algorithms algorithms and the SEO and stuff like that. But like he was talking to an audience who like understands that like it was just crazy how he was able to talk about it to all different levels of abilities and understandings. Yeah, it was well, so super and, useful. Yeah. No, and it's like because he'll even he's like um so basically he did, he did like three classes and one was on like how to get your, um, your business to, to list better on Google places or like the Google maps when you search. Cause that's like above for the most part with businesses, it's like above the search, right? It's like you search and there's like ads and then there's the map and then there's everything else. So like, ideally you'd want to be both in the search and in the map. And w yes, we're, we're, as well. <laughs> so that, yeah, but he did a whole class on that and they, he did a whole class on like, um, just kind of like SEO. I think they call it like advanced SEO, like search engine optimization. And then um, he did one on like, just like how does Google even work? Right. Mm -hmm. And like, cause I think people, yeah, like you, you're like, well, I just search and I find like, you know, I search like teddy bears and I find whatever, but like, like the work that goes into that and that they try to like, you know, break so, it down for you. Yeah. And like, it's even based on like, well, if, if like if people go to your site and like they drop off, well, then like you will go down because Google can tell that like people that were going to like your side or my side yeah. wasn't. But anyway, the, the one class we were at, the first thing he's like, well, if anybody has um, like Google reviews, like obviously the first thing you would do is respond to them. And I was like, I do. And I looked over at Kelly and Kelly's <laughs> and my, like, like, head just went in my hands. Um, this is another example of, of vendor bonding really, because I mean, we're taking away tips from each other. Reed is telling yeah. Kelly to respond to reviews and I'm telling Reed about my automation and he's mm -hmm. taking notes too. So, and I didn't want to go to that like hour I had was like, Oh, I think I'm going to go to this one. He's like, no, like you have to come listen to this Jason Hennessy, right? Isn't that his name? I think it's, I'm I think I'm gonna say Jason Hennessy. like you have to listen to him talk. I'm like, okay. So I'm like, I'll spend the hour with Reed. Like we had just bumped into each other in the hallway and I sat in and it was just kind of like, I mean, to even talk about like sponsoring a local little league team just to get your name there and just the, silly things to do it. But, um, it just kind of makes you think like, how do I better like put my presence out there and what's changing? It's just kind of crazy, but it's always like a good pat on the back when like, I'll always ask clients like, Hey, how'd you find us? Like, Oh, you know, I just Googled Tacoma wedding venues and you popped right up and I clicked on you. Like, it's like, okay, yeah, we're doing something great. And I think you and I both Googled ourselves 
in that seminar and kind of popped in locations that he said you should be at. So it was kind of a nice little reassurance, but still gets you thinking of, okay, if things change or how do we better do it or how do we secure this spot and how do we make sure we stay here? Yeah. And not to say to lose anybody too much on this. So Rebecca gave us a great <laughs> ass when we were talking about the lake, but just so like, so the, the you know, again, so besides tangible things to take from like the NBA. So like, you know, Google is constantly looking at, you know, how well you rank, how relevant you are, right? Like you want to look for, you know, Seattle wedding photography or Tacoma or whatever. And so like, I want to show up in like, you know, Seattle and then West Seattle and have the business show up in the maps and all that. And so it's like, Google's constantly looking at like, okay, I'm in the West Seattle chamber. Okay. That's linking, you know, that's a reputable West Seattle site. So that's linking to this. Okay. I'm in the Seattle Metro business chamber. Okay. So that's a Seattle thing. So that's linking to my site. So like on the plane, I emailed like West Seattle literally, cause that was the advice that he gave is he was like, here's like a really easy, like pro tip. sponsorship to get your link. Yeah. On the 50 website. bucks for three years or whatever. Like, but he's like, but Google, like, looks at that and like, well, here's the West Seattle or the Puyallup or the whatever. I mean, again, you could have it be anything. It could We're be sharing the, all our secrets. Well, but I mean, this is just <laughs> like, like I said, this is like a really like easy, like this is like a 30 second easy thing. Right. Yeah. But like anything, it could be like the gun or the rifleman's association or whatever, but like, well, they've been in Tacoma for a hundred years and they have this like a relevant website. Well, like do a thing with them, sponsor that. And then, but like, because of that relationship with the links online, like Google will look at that and like, you will gain down the pit from that, from you obviously being on that site, even though it's not necessarily wedding related, it's it more location based stuff. Right. So yeah. that's the kind of thing. Right. But it's like little stuff like that where be you're like, Oh, podcast. I would never yeah, be on the podcast, get a link out. <laughs> what do you think, Callie? I need, I'm hiring somebody to do SEO. <laughs> I don't understand it. Again, one of those things, you know, well, we, wear so, we wear so we many wear hats. so many hats. So and I will many. tell you that this, you know, but it's also, I don't think that like a beginning planner or somebody in the beginning industry could probably take that and put that money towards it. Like I couldn't like five years ago, there's no way that I could ever do that no. now. Okay. I'm makes at that sense. point. It makes sense. So for me, I would say like, again, there's like three things. Like I know what I'm really good at. And I'm like, I'm not good at cleaning my house either. So I also, <laughs> fucking, <laughs> I'm like, I also hire somebody to do that. And I don't think that I th think everybody has that option, but at this point in time in my like business, I can do those things. And so I'm hiring somebody and yeah. So I'll, I'll see how this goes. <laughs> Callie, Callie is hiring everyone. I'm hiring out. So if anybody, if anybody is making it <laughs> looking for a job, contact Callie. Basically Holcomb. this year, I'm like, I need an admin person, which I already have, an SEO person. Actually, those are the only two things, and that's it. But, but. Well, as business owners, we do so much more. I do, do so much more than just photograph weddings. Yes. Yeah. I, I do taxes. In fact, yeah. um, oh, I have an account. quarterly taxes. Oh, yeah. I, I have... I have someone who does it at the end of the year, but I still deal with my quarterly taxes. Right. I have to, I have to pay yeah. sales tax yeah. and I email and I do website stuff yes. and I do social media stuff and I, and then you also have to work SEO. and do your job. And then, yeah. and then I have yeah. to and photograph weddings and, and you also have to be, a, and I have to be a mom to my yeah. three kids yeah. and, and, and I have to be a wife to my husband. Yeah. And it's, it's a work, lot. Work life balance is a, it's a struggle. It's a struggle, man. But I will tell you, I'm like, I might have to go find a little league team. The struggle is real. And I might find that <laughs> I do have, I'm like, I live in set like taps. Sumner. Ta there's I was a like, taps there is a, league. and there's a lake taps gun club. So there I think those go. are the two things I'm going to go do. Yeah. yeah. I will say, um, in, in the one and like Rebecca, you know, we, it's so many hats and, you know, being sole proprietors or, you know, however you want to call it, you know, husband, wife, you know, whatever. But we, I do think, and, and Kelly, even you guys where it's still local, like being able to pivot like that, I do think it's important. And I, like you said, Kelly, I think, um, you know, like first year planners, photographer, whatever, yeah. like, you know, I think you would go to, I mean, I do think anybody would benefit from going to the wedding NBA, but I think like it, it, you do need to have like, a handle on like what you're doing before you're, cause I do think you'll just be totally overwhelmed. I mean, even when I went two years ago, I was like, okay, like if I didn't, if I wasn't like, I, I you almost get overwhelmed with like what you don't know. Right. Yeah. Cause you go and you're like, wow. Like I wasn't even like Should looking at that. like a lot of this stuff. And so I, I think it's, it is like a good, and like Rebecca, you know, it's a good trying to find the right time to go. But, um, 
yeah, you do need to really have a handle on it. But I think being at, being small businesses and being able to like, I could go home and like immediately, you know, add something to my website or mm-hmm. send an email or do this for like larger corporations. Like I think we as small business owners just like need to take advantage of that. Like you yeah. could go home tomorrow and do anything or not, you know, but like figure out what you want. Whereas like, if you're part of like some big organization, like, you know, you might six months later, you, you know, have, maybe. To have seven meetings to make it happen. Yeah. Yeah. hundred percent. Yeah. I'm with you. Yeah. I do think that like there is the, we do have the ability to handle our business the way that we want to handle it. And it's kind of fun that we can do trial and error and we can figure it out on our own. And then, you know, who knows, maybe we could be all a class someday at the wedding MBA. That'd be fun. That would be fun. I don't, I think I'd be a horrible teacher. (laughs) That'd be horrible too. But (laughs) if you guys saw me before this podcast, (laughs) I get, I get a little nervous. Oh, it's been good. No, but I mean, uh, like even, um, go ahead and go with the DJ and stuff like, like the follow up emails, like not even so much tangible, but like some of the, some of the ideas with following up in sales. Like, so we've done, um, I guess the two, we did the big fake wedding show on Thursday and then we did the Newcastle thing yesterday. And so I really tried to, they just had some advice with like following up and like certain, you know, how to, you know, kind of respond to emails and just kind of some tips and whatever. And so like, you know, like I get a list from like Newcastle yesterday, like, you know, we get a list of like 25 people or whatever we talk to of like, you know, 125 come 25, talk to us. And then, you know, however many want to be on the list. And so I had sent an email last night and, and we just kind of worded it a little differently, just based on some of the advice, like I had gotten from the show and like, I track like my emails. So like, I know mm-hmm. like if I send like links, I know, okay, this many people clicked whatever things and like, I had two people email me back last night and another one today and like a significant portion, like click through a lot of the links and stuff I sent. And I don't like know, maybe we just had killer conversations yesterday, but I don't, I think it's a non-zero connection between me also wording stuff differently. So then it almost makes me feel like, well, God, if I would have known this the whole time, like a year ago or two years ago, we're like, just simple, like wording on like how I, you know, sign the email off or being like, Hey, I'm going to, if I follow up in another week, like, don't feel like I'm trying to be overwhelming. We just know, like, I like to touch base and I know that like wedding planning is busy, but like, I got a significantly higher click back on everything I've sent the last two shows just by making little tweaks on that, which is exciting. You know, yeah. the day after wedding MBA, I came back to the office on like a busy day of just like meetings with people who wanted to see the venue because we'd been gone. So it was like, we couldn't see it. And three out of three in the morning asked for contracts, which I was like, here we go. Like I'm in my groove, whatever. And a lot of it, I was still doing the same things, but wedding MBA just kind of takes you away, refreshes you, gets you excited about your business, which I think is important, but does get you to talk about things or think about things in a different way. How do I present the same information in a different way? Um, so I've gotten to look, I mean, I've shown the venue countless times. I can't even tell you, I feel like I'm giving the same tour over and over, which I am, but being able to be excited and present it to people and just paint the picture, um, that first day back from MBA was like a huge success. And I think that's just kind of attributes to what we learned at MBA and the mindset that we brought home. So it was pretty exciting for that to happen. Similar to you, like those conversations you built, um, what if I had implemented this years ago? But you kind of have to know what you've learned along the way to be able to get to the point where you can change and adapt um, and get to where we are now. Yeah, you definitely could. It's really easy to get sad after you learn stuff there and be like, oh, no, like I, <laughs> I've been making these mistakes for you. Like yeah. the, the, the other DJ did the whole like blogging to promote yes. sales or whatever. And then she had said like, what, you know, when I learned these tricks, like I went back, she goes, I totally blew up. Like I just took away everything she that did, I had yeah, took it off. and I, I, you know, I am an OCD person and I am prone to like do things. I would like that is something I would do. And I really like had to be like, no, luckily I had enough stuff from like this year that I could like tweak. And then I'm like, all right, like 2019 on, but like, I'm not, you know, cause I could go back like six years mm-hmm. and like tweak stuff, but it's like, so it is, it's this tough balance between like, you know, changing things moving forward versus like, well, I need to go back and like totally make a new website or something. So I'm not going to go back and respond to every review. Oh, I think you should. I told you. I would. They would say, oh, Kelly's really five years ago. Kelly's really. I finally read a review of that. (laughs) 
<laughs> but no, but like, and they had said on there too about getting like the Google, like the Google people to come do like the virtual walkthrough. And I told you, like, I, I would pay to have a studio just to pay to have that, just to have it be on my Google listing. But I don't, but I would. <laughs> Like you guys with your studio, like I would pay a thousand. I don't care what it is. I would pay whatever amount. You got I one. Oh, do what, it for free. We should look into that. Wait, what is it? What? So, so, so like you can, so to get on like that virtual listing on like, so like when you search Google and like, so like we're Let's like see. our, our PO box is at like the West Seattle mail that's like yeah. up the road, like the storm. Like I, we just have a PO box for like our public office, right? Since you guys have like an office, yeah. you just, you Google like Google map certified for whatever. And they'll come and they'll do, and it doesn't matter if it's even one room, right? They'll do like a virtual walkthrough where it's, I mean, like I say, it doesn't matter if it's two, two rooms, it doesn't, historic, you know, whatever. And then like having that on there is like huge for like your Same Google Maps your listings and stuff because like you're like, oh, you have like Google knows, like you have a Google certified, but like, like I told Kelly at the thing, like if like, if I was like had dumb money, which I don't like, I would have a studio just so I would have that just because of the Google listing and I wouldn't even like, that's how like dumb I am with like paying for results. <laughs> you have like a little studio right here. Just have them walk yeah. in your house. Yeah. Well, that's, that, that's scary. <laughs> but, but you know what I mean? But it's yeah. stuff like that. Like, and again, like coming from the NBA, like tangible stuff like that, yeah. like I'm going to do that. Like I'm in yeah. like do it tomorrow, you know, and yeah. maybe it's 500 bucks or maybe it's 2000. Okay. Well that's, Whatever. we're not going to do that, but maybe it's something tangible that you guys could do. But like, that's something that, you know, that you have. And like, again, like having these checklists of things is huge versus like, well, I went to this conference and people talked to me for four days versus like, well, I have a lot this of notes, but then I have like actual things to do. Yeah. Cause we're going to implement. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, good. Yay. Well, this late, I don't want to keep you guys too late. Why don't we do a uh, last, uh, last big takeaway uh, of the NBA uh, and Kelly, we can start and kind of, kind of loop around. I just think the biggest takeaway was looking how to be a better business and better serve our clients is something that we're really looking at. And I know it's very broad, but just kind of evaluating us as a business and how we operate. And then two, like, I mean, I touched on this on my podcast one-on-one -on -one with you. Like I'm a huge advocate for networking in an industry. A lot of us are work by ourselves or small business. And so taking that time to really build each other up and build those relationships and just have that opportunity to sit with each other outside of an event setting is something that I'm a huge believer in and a huge pusher. So organizing the nights out in Vegas and the dinners and whatnot, like that's something I believe in. And I, I don't, that's just become my sole mission for some reason. Um, I have all these crazy ideas always, but I just think improving the business and then building the relationship in the industry are probably my two big takeaways. I'd say. Kelly, what about you? I'm all about the team working thing because we really are. We're like, a, it's like we're a little virtual team and we really do need some days to be like, no, you're good. Like, don't worry. You did a good job. Like sometimes you do, you doubt yourself as a small business and oh man, I screwed up on that. Or I did this and just having a team being like, no, you're okay. Like you're going to make it through and it's okay to make mistakes. So I would say that huge thing was our networking. I called it bonding. Yeah. No, team bonding. bonding. Cause really it's bonding. That's what it's we're bonding, doing, but it's networking. It's networking, it's, but it's bonding. It's bonding. It was really fun. Um, the other thing was, uh, Oh, what, this is totally small little one, but for, as a planner, um, getting everybody's handles on, on the, like my itinerary is going to be, so all I have to do is just like literally copy and paste it. And you can throw that thing right into, um, an Instagram post. That's a good idea. Yeah. And then how you wanted to be f like named on there. So like for me, I always want to be the like day of coordinator, depending upon the service or planner or designer. And then for you, it's like photography or floral designer or florist, like however that specific business wants to be named, you know, cinematographer or videographer, like what is it that you find, you know, most appealing and works best for your business. And so that was something that I took away. I was like, hey, I'm going to totally do that. So rather than just having, and it's just going to be a copy and paste thing, doo -doo, done. Simple. Or Simple. like we, we like, we are best made videos and I own the trademark for that. So right. I appreciate it when everyone lists right. best made videos, if you list the R on there. Like the actual thing. Mm -hmm. right? Yeah. But I have to, I correct that a lot on right. listings. Yeah. And like, you know, like I. You're proud of that. So, yeah, I'm yeah. proud of that. Yeah. So it's like, you want it to be shown properly. So <laughs> I would say that those are the two things um, that I learned. My takeaway. It's fun. Rebecca, what about you? 
I had so many takeaways. I don't know if I can really just say like one big one. I mean, the networking, the bonding that I feel like that was just so important and so necessary. Um, the studio management software, super excited to get that implemented, but probably, I mean, the biggest takeaway, I think that's going to make the biggest change in my business this year is, um, the class that we took on editing. Um, it was called flash editing, um, meaning like quickly editing. And one of the biggest issues that we have, um, well, I wouldn't say issues, but one of the, the biggest challenges we face is turnaround time. It's a lot of wedding photos to go through and it takes a long time. And Alex, my poor husband, <laughs> he does all of the editing and he is oftentimes in the office from 7 a.m. until 10 or 11 o'clock at night. I'm, I mean, almost all day long, he is sitting in front of the computer editing everybody's photos, trying to get things done as quickly as possible. We know how excited our clients are to see their photos. Um, and the biggest takeaway I think was just how to, how to do that a little more quickly and efficiently. And we're, we're starting to implement that now. We've actually, um, the last two weddings that we've put out since we've been back from Vegas, we've put in some new, um, new techniques and it seems to be working. So hopefully my husband can get a little bit of his life back <laughs> and I can get a little bit of my husband back and we can get a little bit of family time back. Um, and I think it's great. So, but they had them like on, you know, cause we sat on that together. And I think like the, the advice they had, um, of like having you call or like yeah. go through, I'm like, calling is like going through and like getting rid of the bad photos and yeah. like, not the bad, but like the duplicates the or duplicates like this was out of the test shots and things like that. Yeah. And like having, you know, like you call once yeah. that he's at or that he calls once that you're at, because you know, you have that emotional connection. Right. Well, his, I, his main problem was he didn't want me to go through his photos. He, he was like, I, I was at the wedding. I know what was going on. I want to go through those photos and decide what to keep and what not to keep. And I've been telling him for years, let me just go through your photos. Just let me go through them. I'll eliminate the duplicates. I'll eliminate the test shots, you know, the, the out of focus, anything like that. Let me go through them for you. And he had a hard time letting go of that control. He was afraid I was going to get something, get rid of something his clients might want to see. And I had to remind him that this business is as important, if not more important to me than, you know, it is to you. So we're in the same boat. I'm not going to get rid of anything. I think a client would want to see, so you don't have to worry about it. Just let me go through the photos for you. And I promise like, it'll make your life easier. So I've gone through his last couple weddings and he's been able to, instead of spending three days editing a wedding, he's been able to do it in one, which well, is huge, yeah. huge. So amazing. yeah, I think it's going to change hopefully change our lives for the better. And also the, if now we're just giving it, but it was interesting, like the, the calling mm -hmm. and going through that before, like you post anything where like so many photographers, like, well, I'm going to post like these four epic shots yeah. and I'm going to forget about this wedding for a month. And then, Oh shoot, I got to go edit that. But like we call and go through all the stuff and like get all the hard work out of the way before we even post anything. And so then when it's time to edit it and you're like, Oh, I just got to go through all the good stuff I have now. Right. And it, it you basically like you pull the bandaid off first and then, you know, kind of get some of the hard stuff out of the way. Yeah. It's going to take us a little bit of time to get to that point because we're, we're a little backlogged yeah. from the summer. So, um, but, but for 2020, for 2020, you know, that's yeah, that's definitely the plan is to try to get things done quicker and more efficiently. Um, you know, it's always our goal to make our clients happy and get them their photos as soon as possible. Um, so I'm hoping to get that system in place and see how it goes. I think it's going to go, go go good. Reed, what were your takeaways from it? Yeah. Can we put you on the spot? Yeah. What are your you takeaways? attended just like us. Um, echoing Callie's point about the, the Instagram handles and all that, if you don't have a direct email on your website What's that it? planners wow. can get, not oh. these contact form, even like me, because I email a lot of photographers yeah. about like. I'm like guilty. Have, yes. Yeah. yeah. And, I, yeah. And Give me an email, not a contact order. form. Yeah. yeah. No, Something no. I care about. So uh, that that just and that that's a total separate note. But um, yes, you should have a either your email or like like click to email us here, and it's like you can get the email and not have to do the form. Uh, but also like 
Um, and having, like I have that on every page now, but that was stuff I learned like two years ago at the NBA. It was like every page you go to, like every, there's not a page on my website where there's not a click button to text a click button in email. You can obviously go to the contact form. And then we have like the, the chat, you know, I have like a chat thing come up that you can, and it'll just hit my phone up too. But like that's stuff that I learned, you know, I mean, two and a half years ago now, but it's on there. But, um, I just think like, um, it's just so, you know, it's so crowded, like we said, in like photographers and video and everything. And people, the people that take the time to go to that, like you're, it just sets it apart. And like, even you guys here, like taking the time after the fact, like even reflect on that, it's just an extra level. And like, I always want our clients to know, like, no one's ever going to like, you know, with you guys, like no one's ever, you're always going to want to do the best job that you can. Right. And like, no one's going to want to have as good of a wedding in Cali, like as you are, you know, planning that, or, you know, obviously like at the venue or photography, but like, you know, taking the time to do that, um, and just seeing, you know, how many people go to the NBA, but then also like how not as many, like, you know, there was like 15 from Seattle. Like how many people did we know There's, that went? I didn't like see 12, 15 at dinner. I like how many, there was 1200 venues there. there. Yeah. All together. And I don't think there was another vent. Well, there's one other venue at. Um, you mean there was 1,200 vendors? 12. No, there's 2,600 attendees at Wedding NBA this year. Okay. 1,200 of them were venues. The only other venue I saw was Seabrook, who came to dinner with us. At yes. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, like, there's one other venue, but those are the only two um, venues that I knew from the area that were there. I mean, there was a small group of yeah. area. I mean, we had like 12. 14 people at dinner, which was huge, but like, yeah, but that's insane. That's like, like event. That's yeah. like two vendor teams on a normal wedding weekend. Well, and if you think like, what did they like, how many, there's like 1600 photographers in King or like whatever the number, like you I guys didn't go. see a single photographer that I knew and nor like I'm friends with a lot of photographers on Facebook in the area. And I didn't see a single one of them post about being there. So I, I don't, I don't know. Yeah. So I guess I just, that's my takeaway is just like, and not that obviously you can't be successful, you know, not going, but, um, just knowing, you know, people that are just taking that time to invest and besides the money and just the time and like, you know, Rosie, like our dog had gotten attacked and like, that was hard to like leave. And, you know, Dorothy's trying to figure, you know, like everyone's like, you know, you guys are leaving, you know, everyone's leaving stuff to go kids, you know, families and taking that time. Um, I just think is, is a good, um, just a way to see like, you know, your vendor is, is really taking the time. It's a huge mm -hmm. investment in our business. We have to invest a lot more than money into our mm -hmm. business. We have to invest time and yeah. I think we all hit a point where we're happy with our success and mm -hmm. it's easy to continue going forward where you're at. But I think really making the push to be better and improve is something that a lot of people don't take. They just say, I'm happy with where I'm at. Um, it's working. It's great. Let's continue on to the next wedding season or on to the next year. Um, and they don't really look, how do I do this better? What can I do to be a better business, be a better whatever the next year? And so I think those of us who take the opportunity to step away and look at that um, will obviously see the growth and see the benefit of doing things like this, where we just step back and evaluate ourselves. Yeah. Perfect. That's a good ending point. I like that. Kelly gets the last word. Woo -woo. Um, if people want to learn more about you guys uh, and, you know, and who you guys are, uh, websites, let's plug them real quick. Let's start with Kelly and go around. Perfect. Holcomb Weddings and Events, HolcombWeddings.com, H-O-L-C-O-M-B, Weddings with an S.com. Historic 1625. Um, social media, we're just Historic 1625 on all platforms. And then our website is Historic1625.com. Rebecca Jane Photography. Uh, we are RebeccaJanePhotography.net. And on um, Instagram, we are Seattle underscore wedding underscore photography. Perfect. And, uh, and you know us, but uh, if you are uh, a vendor uh, like these guys and you're interested in coming on the podcast, you can go to www.bestmadevideos.com slash podcast guest. And that's a nice, easy questionnaire I have set up. See how I do that? And then you just go on there and it's just a direct form. Uh, it'll automate an email back to you and, and let you know that we'll get in contact within 24 hours. Uh, and uh, if you are... Um, automation, I like it. Yeah, automation. But that's smart automation. Yes. And uh, like we talked about. And if, uh, if you... Um, you know, if, if you like what we're doing here on the podcast, we got three wonderful vendors here tonight that like what we're doing. You can go to www.bestmadevideos.subscribe or bestmadevideos.com slash subscribe. And that's a great way to like and, and review the podcast and, and get our uh, 
review count up. I think we might have three more reviews coming tonight after this one. Can we respond to those reviews? Yes. And I will Um, respond. And Rebecca already said she's going to be episode number 100. Episode 100. 100. Yeah. So you'll see me in 20 weeks. 20 weeks. It'll be 20 weeks. And uh, Callie, when are you coming on to do your solo one-on-one? Oh, man. Next week. You should 2020. We could just stay. What? You could just, you, your kids are going to stay right now. We're going to just go. I'll home. say that we're going to start a blog in 2020 if you say you're going to start doing podcasts. See, that was the other thing I told you guys on the thing. I said I would pay a kid five bucks. You know, you have to blog everything. Yeah. I think a historic 1625 blog is coming 2020. Perfect. A blog. A nice. blog. I like nice. it. Good job. Perfect. Uh, This has been another episode of Get to Know Your Wedding Pro. Check back next week for another wedding interview. Thanks so much. Yay! That was really loud. (laughs) 